this is a video I don't really want to make, but I feel um I feel it's an important video to make. Um there's been some sad news from Glasgow. Young boxer Mike Tile has um died after a bout for a British title eliminator um with Welshman Dale Evans. Uh, Mike Tile was only twenty five years old. He had a record of 11 wins, just one loss, which was this one, and one draw. Um, the referee was Victor Lockton. Um, I, I don't know the last time there was a death in a British ring, mean, certainly it's been a very long time, but there have been a number of um, infamous uh, incidents with fighters getting seriously injured. Michael Watson, of course, and earlier this year, Nick Blackwell. Um, this tragedy has... Firstly, it's provoked a response from the boxing world. Ricky Hatton's going to have a fundraiser for the Tile family. Um, his opponent has paid tribute to a true warrior. At least that was before his death was announced. Um, and Kel Brook has also shared a tribute post. Uh, I imagine there's going to be tributes from across the boxing world. Um, Mike Tile was a welterweight, so that's the division that I fought in. Uh, not that I fought in a division, but that's my weight, basically. Um, so it, it, I, I'm acutely aware if I was, you know, at this sport, at professional level, he's the sort of guy I could have been facing. Um, so I want to talk about this as a boxing fan. Um, firstly, it's very difficult to vindicate the sport to people who who aren't boxing fans, because what they see is a barbaric sport where men, in their eyes, beat each other to death. There are a few important things to recognise. Firstly, um, deaths in the ring are actually very rare. Um, and I think if you look at, for example, the number of fatalities involved in the wrestling business, certainly um, young fatalities, it's a lot higher. Um, and that's not always in the ring, that's from... Uh, steroid misuse and a range of factors um, and I don't mean any disrespect to wrestlers in saying that but it is a fact deaths in the ring in boxing are still relatively rare I can't even remember the last time there was a death in a British boxing ring um, I'm not saying it never happens and I'm not going to deny the fact that this is a dangerous sport and no one involved in boxing can try and gloss that over it is a dangerous sport the MP Paul Flynn, uh, I believe he's a Labour MP, has already been calling for it to be banned. Um, I I do actually understand that. I, I do understand the feelings of those who think th their logic is, well, this is 21st century, this is gladiatorial sort of mentality. Um, young men beating each other in this way. And... Uh, I understand the argument that the purpose is to render your opponent unconscious. Personally, actually, I prefer fights where it's a good brawl and, um, you know, both guys come out standing. I don't actually like knockout fights in the same. That might sound strange coming from a boxing fan, but I prefer just good brawls to knockout fights. Because with knockout fights, I always do have concern about the down fighter. Um, even in... Uh, at higher level, um, Dillian White, jo Anthony Joshua, Dillian White was on oxygen. He he turned out okay. Most of the time, that is the case. Um, I don't know whether there was a pre-existing condition, but it it has to be stressed that this wasn't a white collar event, which is what I was involved in. I know the British Boxing Board of Control has issue with that. This was as as far as I know, uh, an event licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Now, in the week leading up to it, Mike Powell had complained of headaches, but that was put down to migraines. Perhaps that was a mistake, time, time will tell. Migraines brought about by the stress of leading up to it. Um, the free will aspect shouldn't be downplayed. Mike Powell was a young man who clearly loved the sport. He wouldn't have been doing it otherwise, and... Whilst there is corruption involved in boxing, 90% um, of fighters are doing it because they want to do it. People might say, oh, well, uh, there's, um, there's an economic drive in some cases. But 
if that was the case, then they'd get involved in football or other sports that can also generate money. Um, in fact, getting big money in boxing is not that lucrative anyway. So I'm skeptical of how much a motivating factor that is. I think basically guys do this sport and women because they want to do it. Because they want to challenge themselves. That's why I've done it. Was I scared going into my bout? Yes. Was I aware that there are risks? Yes. But I put them to the back of my mind. And I have no doubt that when Mike Tyler went into this fight, he put that at the back of his mind. This was a guy who had had 11 victories. And he certainly wasn't a household name, but he was a young man who was clearly doing something he was good at. He had 11 victories, and which he loved. And I, I, told, I really do respect the feelings of those who, who don't share my thoughts on this and who think it's barbaric and so on. But you can't take away the free will aspect. Roman gladiatorial games, the slaves had no choice. Boxers do. And there comes a point when every fighter says to himself, I've had enough. Um, I would say there is, to some extent, a machismo in the sport whereby if fighters step down for whatever reason, I mean, we're seeing this right now with Tyson Fury. Um, the, the only contention I would have is tragedies like this, if anything good comes out of it, and that's you know, there's very little good can come out of something like this. But if anything comes out of it, it should reinforce a respect factor among fans. Uh, this is why I get so angry with those so-called fans who disrespect fighters. Every fighter, from the very top, Floyd Mayweather, to the, the very lowest level, white-collar boxing, knows that there are risks involved, and they take risks. Bernard Hopkins had a recent... Um, interesting article in Ring Magazine. Every fighter in the world, doesn't matter what level they're at, takes risks. So this is why I really get frustrated with those who disrespect fighters, call them bums, tomato cans, etc. It's a disgusting way to treat another human being. Um, but why do fighters do it? Firstly, um, fighters are not sadists. I guarantee you Dale Evans would not have wanted to see that. No fighter wants to see their opponent carried away in a stretcher. The official cause of death, incidentally, was bleeding on the brain. No fighter wants to see their opponent carried away in a stretcher. In fact, before my vote, I was hoping I would win, obviously. But I was also hoping that neither of us got seriously injured. And in my case, that didn't happen. Um, no fighter... I know there's a lot of bravado in the sport. I know there's, you know, um, a lot of rhetoric. Um, that's to sell fights. The truth is the majority of fighters do not want to see their opponent seriously hurt. They want to win. And they might be all mouth in some cases before a big fight. But no fighter really wants to see that. I should say the majority of fighters don't. You, you know, this is a sport that's very hard to vindicate. It's difficult to really present it as a civilised sport because it's not. And there's no way to try and pretend that it is. But what people need to understand is the fighters' mindset. Fighters don't think like normal people. Fighters, when they're in that ring, they're living on the edge. The fear is a driving force. And on one hand, of course, this is tragic. A young man has died. But on the other hand, you have to consider that for a boxer, it's better to die in the ring. Not that they that they want that to happen, but their mentality is it's better to die in the ring than to die as a feeble, weak old man from a heart attack or something. If I had a choice, I'd rather die in the ring, honestly. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful or crude. That doesn't mean I want to die in the ring. Ideally, everyone will want to die peacefully in their sleep. But, you know, I would rather die in the ring as a young man than to be, I don't know, seriously um, in serious physical pain as an older man. Now, obviously, the counter argument to that is when you have serious injuries in the ring, then they can, um, 
they can leave boxers in a very bad state, like Gerald McClellan. Um, just because this is a dangerous sport doesn't mean that there shouldn't be precautions taken. It looks like in this case, no one was to blame. It looks like the um, all the medical checks were done in advance. Um, sometimes it is just, um, really is just bad luck. I mean, every boxer gets hit on the head. But if this sport was, I, I would definitely, if it was a case that boxers were dying every week, then I would be joining those who say it should be banned. But that's not the case. And I have to emphasize deaths in the ring. I mean, one death is one death too many, but, you know, it is actually pretty rare. I can't even remember the last time it happened in this country. Um... I mean, no fight fan wants to hear this. And it is very, very difficult to justify. Very difficult. But you cannot take away that free will aspect. And what goes through fighters' mind, and this is very hard to explain to someone who really isn't a fan of the sport, that you, you get an adrenaline from that danger aspect that you simply don't get in a sport like tennis or golf. And it's that living on the edge I guess it's like extreme sports. Why do people go skydiving? There's risks involved in that. Why do people go bungee jumping? For a fighter, it's more or less the same mentality. And okay, I'm not speaking to someone who's a lot of experience. I've only had one fight. But even that one fight, I, I know what it felt like. And does this tragedy make me not want to do the sport? Honestly, it makes me wary of it. It reminds me of the dangers. But that wouldn't stop me necessarily going into the ring. Because it is pretty rare. Even serious injuries are relatively rare. In fact, cheerleaders are more likely to get injured. Show jumpers are more likely to get injured. That's not to downplay the danger aspect. Um, I, I do think maybe if I, if I was to sort of maybe want one change, I'd like perhaps there to be less focus on good fights being defined as knockout fights. Maybe that is one aspect that the sport needs to reevaluate, And maybe that's where MMA is probably going to get some traction because there is, that's not to say, you know, um, I believe earlier this year in Dublin, a young MMA fighter was killed. So it's not completely immune from dangers either. But with MMA, one of the big arguments in favour of that is that Fights are shorter and there's less concentrated blows to the head. Now, it's difficult to dispute that with boxing, there is a concentration on the head and there is that concussive aspect to it. Um, personally, I prefer fights, I could say, that are good brawls, that are good 50-50 fights and both guys are standing at the end. Um, I'm not a huge fan of knockout fights. That might sound strange, but um, I do fear knockout fights. Sometimes I do automatically think is a guy on the ground okay but in the end of the day um i think when everything is weighed up the the free um choice aspect that's not to say that there isn't corruption i'm well aware that you get there's still uh underworld world criminal involvement fixed rights and so on most of the time that's not the case it is a problem in the sport but you get that sort of corruption in every sport um I just hope some things come out of this. Firstly, I hope fans just show more respect to fighters. In my opinion, if you disrespect a fighter, you're not a real fan. Secondly, I think there should be a bit less focus on the knockout aspect of fights because that that aspect perhaps encourages blows to the head. Um, with boxing, blows to the body are permitted and perhaps that should be, I wouldn't say encouraged, but... Perhaps there should be less focus on blows to the head. Um, banning it, I'm not sure if that's the right approach. It's it's not going to be workable because in the end of the day, there's going to be um, promoters who will then bring it underground. And that's far more dangerous because then you're going to have struck off doctors. You're going to take away the legal aspects of the sport. Um, and it's potentially going to be a lot more dangerous because potentially in some fights you wouldn't even have doctors. Um, you know, because at the moment you have um, professional doctors who are involved in these things. If it's underground, doctors who value their career aren't going to get involved, which means that there is 
it's a safety aspect um, is greatly compromised. Um, there isn't a great deal more I can say, really. Um, I, I also feel for I feel for Mike Tyler's family. I also feel for Dale Evans. There's no fighter wants to go through that to think that they were responsible for the death of an opponent or the serious injury of an opponent. Uh, Rocky Marciano certainly one of his opponents um, early in his career was seriously injured. That had a big effect on him. The same with Barry McGuigan. No fighter wants to do that to, you know, fighters are not sadists. You don't go into a ring and think that other guy's my enemy. I hate him. It's basically a case of he's my opponent. I'm fighting him. I want to win. So I have to better him in the ring. Fighters, in most cases, they barely know their opponent. So those are just a few things that I hope critics of boxing take away. I'm not trying to change your mind. I respect your opinion. But I, I think it's wrong to patronise fighters and say, oh, the this is just for... I've heard people say things like, oh, boxers are sadists. And so I think that's very unfair. Firstly, you're talking about people you don't know on a personal basis. There's many boxers are some of the most decent, honest people you could ever meet. Um... And this idea of the slandering of fighters for doing something that they want to do. You know, I could totally understand if this was a case of forcing people to fight. That would be dead wrong. There, there's one other thing I hope comes out of this. I think that fighters need to get a full, and perhaps it's not relevant in this case because this was a medical issue as opposed to a psychological issue. But I do think when fighters are going through serious depression or whatever, um, if they have a title, they should relinquish it and get help. And there should be less of a machismo in the sport that doesn't sort of shun that. When this was spoken about with Tyson Fury, um, there was a lot of plastic fans kind of insulting him. I've been through depression. I know what it's like. Uh, Tyson Fury had other issues. He's not my favourite person in the world. I think he's a braggart. Um, but he needs to relinquish his titles and get help. Um, then Lex Lewis actually pointed that aspect out about depression. And there shouldn't be a stigma around fighters. You know, that is a very serious issue. It can seriously detract from... It's got nothing to do with their ability. It's a distraction. So it needs to be taken care of. And there shouldn't be a stigma around fighters for doing that. It's it's a very legitimate um, issue. So those are just a few things to think about. Um, I'm sure there'll be many other thoughts that could be added to this. But for now, I'm going to round that up. This isn't going to be banned. Um, I respect Paul Flynn's views, but... I think if you ban it, it's just going to go underground. And with all respect to Paul Flynn, he's underestimating the, the free will aspect involved in this. No one forced Mike Tyle to fight. And he would have known the risks involved. Every fighter at every level does. So I would just say to fans, these sort of incidents should remind you to be a proper fan and respect all fighters. Respect the risks that they take. No fighter is a bum, no fighter is a tomato can. Let's just get rid of that trash language. Um, and yeah, just respect fighters. Um, these sort of things are inevitably going to happen, but we shouldn't over-exaggerate either. This is not a very regular occurrence. That's, of course, no comfort to Mike Tyle's family, but that is a fact. It, if this was happening every week, or even every month, I would be joining Paul Flynn and saying this should be banned. But this is actually a pretty rare event. Um, you know, I'm going to have to do research, but I don't even know when the last time a British boxer died in the ring. Um, certainly it's been years. So instead of sort of thinking this was a young man who died before his time, people should think this was a young man who died doing what he loved. And... You know, uh, that that should be uh, perhaps a legacy of Mike Tyle. Let's not just look at this as a... I think it's almost insulting to look at it just as a tragedy. He had a good career. Um, and even if he didn't, the point is he was doing something he loved. So, yeah, it's, you know, no boxing fan, no boxer wants to hear this. Um, but that shouldn't tarnish the whole sport as being something that it's not. Yes, it's dangerous. Is it barbaric? No, because 
it's it's tough it's controlled aggression it's not barbaric because what's barbaric is is animal blood sports where the animals have no choice or what isis does to yazidi sex slaves that's barbaric what two consenting adults do to each other in the ring is not barbaric it's tough it's a violent sport it's controlled aggression but it's not barbaric okay let me know your thoughts